In this video, I'll answer the question, why is transfer critical to successful learning? When I play tennis, that's my stroke. But when I play racquetball, the stroke is more of a follow through down here. Whereas in tennis, it's up here. So when I play racquetball, my tennis stroke messes up my racquetball stroke. Why is that? This video is part of the EdPsych Insight series in which I explain educational psychology concepts. This is an example of transfer because my learning in one situation, playing tennis, affects my performance in another situation, racquetball. In this case, it's an example of negative transfer because there's a negative effect on my racquetball playing based on my tennis playing. Negative transfer can occur in sports and other activities that involve bodily movements, such as playing instruments. But negative transfer can also occur in academic activities. For example, a student who has learned how to add fractions by adding the numerators and keeping the denominator the same may apply the same strategy when multiplying fractions by multiplying the numerators and keeping the denominator the same instead of multiplying the denominators. This is an example of negative transfer because learning how to add fractions has had a negative effect on multiplying fractions. In other words, something previously learned hindered the performance in another situation. Now luckily, there's also positive transfer. Positive transfer occurs when something previously learned helps learning or performance in another situation. This would occur when a student realizes that the distributive property they learned in a prior grade also applies to the problems they're now doing in algebra. Positive transfer is more likely to occur when the two situations overlap in some way. That's called specific transfer, and it occurs when the original learning activity and the transfer activity overlap fairly significantly. For example, there's a fairly high overlap between these two problems, which should help a student achieve positive transfer. There's also a lot of overlap between these problems and this third problem, because all of them involve the distributive property. Therefore, students should be able to positively transfer their knowledge of the distributive property to this problem as well. General transfer occurs when the original learning activity and the transfer activity don't overlap much. So although transfer can occur, it's harder for people to do. For example, it's possible that teaching students computer programming can improve their logical thinking skills. In this case, students may be able to apply these logical thinking skills to other types of problems they encounter that are not related to computer programming such as writing a logical philosophical paper, or using logic to solve a mathematical theorem. It may be helpful to think of transfer as a continuum from specific transfer to general transfer, where a lot of activities occur somewhere between these two extremes. Transfer is more likely to occur when the activities overlap a lot. However, teachers can do some things to help students improve their ability to transfer. For example, they can help students really learn the concepts and skills. This is more likely to happen when students see many different examples of the concepts, and when they have opportunities to apply the concepts and skills to diverse situations. In the case of learning the distributive property, it would include showing students many different types of problems that involve using the distributive property. So why is transfer critical to successful learning? Well, if you can't transfer what you've learned to anything else, then you can only do exactly what you've learned. For example, if you couldn't transfer your knowledge of the distributive property and your teacher only showed you this problem, then you'd only be able to solve this problem and no other problems. So as you can see, being able to transfer what you've learned to new situations and problems is critical not only to successful learning, but also to being successful in life. If you found this video helpful, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more videos. More information about this topic is available at my website and in the Essentials of Educational Psychology book, which are linked in the description below. Thanks for watching!